If you ever watch the film The Martian, you will likely be impressed at the character Mark Watney, an astronaut on the Ares 3 mission to Mars. His story is compared to Robinson on Mars, given that after a terrible storm almost destroys the ship and the base, the crew of his ship believes he is dead. Alone on the Red Planet, he has to find all ways to survive, including making water and growing fruit until the next mission to Mars arrives. Of course, all of us hope that the same scenario will not happen in real life for any astronaut in the future. But if that occurs, at least that astronaut will be luckier than Mark because at that time, Elon Musk successfully developed the Starship rocket used to transport people to Mars at extremely fast speeds. Starship is currently under construction, but with the leaps it has made during IFT2, we strongly believe that the day the rocket reaches Mars will be not too far away. As if to celebrate this event, SpaceX recently caused a stir with a new update on Starbase, containing interesting facts. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. On November 28th, ex-user Cosmical Chief posted photos of the letters on the trailer and wrote, New signage arriving at Starbase. What's it going to say and where's it going to go? The picture reflects the arrival of a truckload of white letters to Starbase, which spawned speculation and a crowdsourced word scramble. Many supposed it would form the sentence, Gateways to Mars, and as usual, SpaceX stayed silent and let its fans do the work in its latest salvo of guerrilla marketing. By Friday, the work was done with the full letter, Gateway to Mars, hanging on the wall. So nice, right? I am curious if it will be lit up at night like the Starbase sign. Interestingly, SpaceX ordered Ion Art, an Austin studio, to design this new sign. This unit also created the huge Starbase sign that adorns the wall at the rocket factory and lights up at night. We find it incredibly cool that the vintage technology of neon signs, with its nostalgic glow, is playing an integral part in the futuristic technology of rocket launching, Ion Art said in a statement. This collaboration is not just about creating a sign, it's about bridging eras, connecting the past and the future in a visually stunning way. It's a testament to the enduring appeal and adaptability of Neon, and we are honored to be a part of this extraordinary journey with SpaceX. In addition to feeling excited, perhaps many SpaceX fans also get curious about what hidden meaning the new sign carries. Well, the new signage comes about a week and a half after Starship's second launch. You should forget, or should not forget, how rocky the journey to gain the FAA's green light for IFTO2 is. There was a time when we were worried that Starship would have to wait until 2024 to launch again, meaning that all other plans would be postponed. Fortunately, SpaceX did not give up. It continued to fight in every way to force the FAA to change its mind. Finally, all efforts bore fruit and Starship flew in this year as desired, and this paved the way for another success. During IFT-02, the public had the opportunity to witness a completely different, more powerful and reliable version of Starship. This is the milestone for further upgrades on both the Raptor engine and rocket afterward. Perhaps with the presence of this signage, Elon Musk wants to affirm that SpaceX has officially stepped to a new and brighter page in its life. Yeah, it's the story in the present. But when you look to the future, have you ever wondered what the journey to Mars will be like once Starship is operational? As always, before starting anything, you should learn the basics of this journey. The average distance between Earth and Mars is 140 million miles, 225 million kilometers. Every 26 months, Mars and Earth are at their closest distance, which is about 57 million kilometers apart. So, during that time, if an unmanned NASA spacecraft traveled at 58,000 kilometers per hour on a direct path between two planets, 
it would take just a little more than 40 days. It sounds great, right? But the reality is much more tough. In space, there are various factors impacting your journey, such as the wrath of the solar system and the weight of life-sustaining resources. Thus, the journey to Mars will take longer, about six months. To fully understand, listen to SpaceX CEO's explanation. When you want to go to Mars, you basically accelerate on the same path of, of Earth going around the Sun, and you time it such that your acceleration gives you an elliptical orbit around the Sun, where the tip of the ellipse uh, intersects with Mars. So Mars is going around, you go and you just time it to coincide with the tip of your ellipse being Mars, and that turns out to be about a six-month journey. Well, what do you think about six months living in a rocket floating in space? I firmly believe that you will not be alone because accompanying you on this journey, there will be up to 100, even 200 other people. That sounds good, like this is the right time to make friends or even build a romantic relationship. It's as simple as living in another city that provides you with all your daily necessities, such as food, bathroom, gym, bedroom, etc. Okay, I hope you have enough information about our upcoming journey, so fasten your seatbelt and we will start now. Assume the rocket liftoff was perfect and everything is going according to plan. Now the Starship is in LEO and prepares to dock at a fuel depot. When the two Starships are docked or connected, the propellant will then be transferred from the refueling vessel to the target spacecraft. This is called the modified side-to-side -side fueling method as opposed to the previous end-to-end -end or colloquially coined butt-to-butt -butt fueling. Once the vehicle is fully fueled in a low Earth orbit, the next step is to refire the engines to escape the Earth's sphere of influence. The point is that the burn has to occur at the right time in the orbit to propel us into the same direction the Earth is orbiting the Sun. To achieve Earth's escape velocity from LEO, the burn requires a delta V of 3.2 kilometers per second. For those who do not know, Delta V depicts how much energy is required to get from one location to another. 3.2 is not enough to get to Mars, of course. For that reason, a small boost beyond escape velocity is added, meaning Starship will take 3.6 kilometers per second to go from LEO to get on a trajectory toward Mars. On arrival, Another 6 kilometers per second will be needed to capture into orbit, lower the orbit, and land softly on the surface. In total, 9.6 kilometers per second is the energy level for a starship to travel from LEO to Mars while to the moon. This number is just 5.6, over half of that of the journey to the red planet. For that reason, it can be said that the journey to conquer Mars is not trivial or simply a long-distance flight. It requires breaking every final frontier of humans, including knowledge, courage, and perseverance. And things get more difficult when you are the first to dare to do this. That's why, out of 7 billion people on Earth, only a small fraction are capable of pursuing that dream. And only Elon Musk dares to be the first to make this journey. Whether you love him or hate him, you have to admit the fact that Elon has sacrificed a lot for the future of humanity. Without him, the dream of living on Mars may never have come true. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.